How's it going everyone? John here. Welcome back to another Streamlabs OBS tutorial. If you're new to the channel or new to the series and you're wanting to learn more about Streamlabs OBS or you're wanting to learn about streaming, how to grow, dealing with all the technical stuff, then go ahead and take a look at the other content on the channel. And if you're enjoying it, be sure to go ahead and subscribe. You guys can also follow me on my other networks, including where I stream over on Twitch. All the information is inside the video description below. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the editor tab. Now, recently, if you guys have noticed, Streamlabs loves to keep adding more updates. So every time I make another video, there's something new. So they added this little mini feed or the new way they're kind of trying to show this whole like event view type deal. So that is one of the newest changes as well as being able to toggle selective recording and everything like that. So selective recording, we may touch on, but for this video, we're not gonna talk about that. I just wanted to kind of let you guys know about those two recent updates. So for the editor tab, this is pretty much what you're gonna, you're gonna see here. So they have it right up here on the very top left-hand corner. It looks like a camera. That's gonna be your editor tab. Before they had it to where there was a live tab and an editor tab, and now they're just kind of bringing everything together and everything like that. So. If you guys have watched my live tab video and everything like that, they looks like they had brought everything together now. So that video is kind of obsolete at this point, but at least you guys know about it. If you ever get a chance to maybe use like an older version of Streamlabs OBS, but for this one, it looks like they brought everything together. So all the information that I mentioned on the live tab video still kind of shows up here because you have it where you know you can pop out the filtering options and stuff like that you can play and pause and mess with the the sounds and stuff like that so you don't want them to show up and everything so those things are still the same but the mini feed i, I like this update i'm not gonna lie i like this update because everything's pretty much there some people might not like it so you can switch back to it which will bring you back to like i believe it would bring you to the live mode for it and everything like that but for, for the editor, this is basically where you'll be able to create your scenes. So I have two scenes here, and they're both, nothing's on them. I mean, well, this one's got a picture. That one is just blank. So, but for the editor tab, scenes, sources, mixer. So for your scenes, I always consider scenes to be more of like your PowerPoint slides. Sources is everything that you put onto those PowerPoint slides. So like all of your different types of standard sources, your widgets and stuff like that. And if you guys are wanting to learn more about all this, but, uh, definitely go ahead and take a look at the, the backlog of videos that I've done for this playlist. I've gone through pretty much all of these. That way you guys understand how to use them. And your mixer side of things, this is dealing with all of the sound stuff it's being able to adjust the different sound audios to make sure nothing's peaking and that you're not running into anything that's really being distorted or anything like that you can see all the levels and everything so that's pretty much your editor tab now there's really not too much that goes into the editor tab from a basic standpoint there are some advanced things you can do once you start filling in your actual scenes and your sources and everything like that we won't get into that into this video this is just basically giving you an understanding and navigation of the editor tab itself now for scenes of course you can add scenes you can delete scenes if you go into the scene transitions and everything like that you have global transition which allows you to do like cut and you can even change that if you want so if you wanted it to be a little bit longer you can do that. Let me get rid of that. If you want to make the duration a little bit longer, you can do that. You have different types of transitions. Stingers is something very common that a lot of professional streamers use and something that I definitely recommend you guys looking into. And you can add your own transition if you want to. Now for connections, connections is going to be something that we'll touch base onto a little bit later on. But for like your sources and everything, you can add groups and folders you can add delete and then of course you have properties whenever you have one open to get to properties as well you can just click on it highlight it. it's going to put a box around it and then you're just going to right click and it's going to give you a bunch of different options but to get to the properties of that image which is the same thing as this gear right here you're just going to click on that and it's going to do that so 
And then if you go over to the mixer, mixer side of things, if you click on the little gear, it's going to bring up this here. And this will allow you to add any type of delays if you need to. If you want to listen to it, you can do with the monitor and output. If you don't want to monitor, or sorry, if you don't want to output it, but you want to at least listen to it, then you can go ahead and do that as well. And of course, being able to adjust the volume levels too. Now for tracks and stuff, this is if you have different audios on different tracks. I personally don't mess with this. I just leave it as it is. It's always defaulted where they're all selected. You can adjust that in your settings too. If you ever wanted to go into your audio section, you can go ahead and adjust all that if you need to. So all that stuff is pretty much there for you. But it's it's pretty basic stuff. There's there's nothing too too crazy when it comes to the editor tab. It's just being able to allow you to add in your scenes, add in your sources, and that should get you guys going. If you want to start adding in some really crazy things, then some of the advanced stuff might be something you're more interested in. Now, down here, I kind of go over some of this on some of the other videos, so I'm just kind of doing a quick recap. But down here, you'll be able to see your CPU usage, your frames that you're trying to stream in, if you have any type of droppage, and then what kind of speeds are coming through for your bitrate. If you want to pop this out, you just click on it, and then it will pop out the window for you, and you can display it somewhere else that you want. Down here, you'll be able to test different widgets, so bits, donations, hosts, and stuff like that. That way, you can kind of see where they are on the screen if you have your alert set up. And of course, recording. You can do that. You can use it as a recorder if you want to. The start replay buffer, you don't have to worry about that. If you guys have questions about it, I can always answer it in the comment section below. Uh, but it's not something that I personally use. And then, of course, go live. Whenever you're ready to go live, this little guy here pops out your chat. I just like to keep it away because I have another way of viewing my chat. But that is pretty much your editor tab. There's, there's very, very little that you really need to to know about it other than it's where you go and create everything that everyone sees. From a basic standpoint though, you're just going to put stuff into your scenes, put stuff into your sources, make sure your volume levels are good. And the best tip that I can give you guys is whenever you are thinking you're ready to go live, you think your levels and everything are good, do a recording onto your local computer using this program. So if you click on the record button, you know, do a little bit of a kind of like a, a pre a pre mock of how you want your stream to be. So if you start your stream, you go into a match or whatever, or if you're doing a game, go into whatever game you're playing, do a little bit of an intro saying like, hey, welcome to the stream, blah, 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 and go around the game and just kind of see how the levels are and then adjust the levels and everything before you start the stream. Because that way you know that the volumes are good, how you want them to be, and that way people can hear you over the game, and that all the levels and everything are set up how they should be. But if I miss anything, please let me know in the comment section below. If you guys have any questions, also let me know in the comments. You can follow me on my networks, join my Discord, follow me over on Twitch. I stream three times a week over there, and you know we're just there to have a fun time. So, But if you're enjoying the content here on the channel, be sure to go ahead and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video or on a future stream. Thank you so much for watching, and take care.